Welcome back, everyone. A. Laura Brody. Hello. Gia Mora here speaking with her, dreamsbymachine.com. Thank you. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the genesis of staple draping. How did you come to do this? How did you sit down at the desk and go, you know what? That looks like a dress <laughs> like waiting a to happen. Yeah. Stapler. <laughs> you know, like almost anything else, it's got some backstory. Great. Well, fill us in. But I used to dress people up for parties. Um, back at Colorado Shakespeare Festival, I used to dress people up in trash bags and bubble wrap and tin foil, and I would tape the outfits on. It's sort of a pre-party event, fun. kind of a fun thing. Pretty soon that became the party, you know, <laughs> as they do, everyone, all the cool kids are hanging out in the kitchen, all the ones are hanging out with a stapler. But I didn't really think about doing anything seriously with that until 2009, I met a lady who was doing an art project, Nova Jing, uh, some, uh, was a project called Alternate Endings, she was doing it for the Public Design Festival in Milan. She wanted to remix people's clothes in a different color fabric for each day of the festival. Oh wow. So somebody to make stuff in the streets. And I came to her and said, you know what, we should do draping. We should drape people because it's so much more fun to watch than paper patterns, which are boring and kind of technical. Right. I mean, that's kind of a, yeah. what I would think of if I were thinking of like making my own clothes, that I'd go to the store, I'd buy a pattern and mm -hmm. like it would look like it was from 1955 with some like, you know, <laughs> gingham, pink gingham and a girl going like this, right? And the, what we call the Becky Homecky. Oh, yes. But it never has to be that. Right. The nice thing is, though, I went out, this was such an adventure, I had maybe 10 days of prep, they paid my travel, I, you know, bumped on the floor with a whole bunch of other artists, but I was draping in the streets and people loved it. They'd never seen anything like this before, and I was like, really? This is the home of fashion. It's Milan. You, you've never seen draping? I didn't know any Italian, I have a little bit of French and way, way back in high school Latin so I could kind of figure things out. I, this woman brought over her kid and was showing him and saying, you, you've got to see this. This is a dying art. This is important. You should see it. <laughs> dying? <laughs> it's not a dying art. I do this every day. What do you mean? But maybe, maybe people want to see this. Maybe they need to see it. Yeah. I took that, um, the Hollywood Fringe Festival was having their very first year in Los Angeles, and I came up with a public art project of my own called Presque Prêt à Porter, Ooh. or Almost Ready to Wear, ah, Yes. and had people come in and bring their fabrics and their clothes so that I could remake that on them as, <gasps> as a happening, oh. an event, a fully remade event. People really loved it. That was where I first realized that tape would suck. But people were excited about this. They really were enjoying it. And I was starting to think, what else could I do with it? Maybe people really need to see things being made. And I had a little aha moment with a stapler because this is fast. I knew I was going to do this in public on people who weren't models. And you know, they're not going to sit still for being pinned. Fittings are long and boring. We wanted something fast and furious that I could knock out in 30 seconds, you know? And I have, and less, less you're not gonna get anything fancy, but um, the stapler just works really well. And, and from that point, you know, I realized this was a great way to show people how to drape. Mm. And sort of, I don't know, find the underlying shapes of the universe of bodies, of furniture, of whatever it is around them that they could drape themselves. Because most people are okay with using a stapler even if they're not okay with using a sewing machine. Sure, sure. You know? Yeah. It's, it makes it a lot more friendly and a lot more human. Yeah. So. And especially if it's something that you can do, I think you've done it, um, you've draped people while they were roller skating. I have. I don't recommend that to the, to the novice, <laughs> I might add, but it's pretty darn fun. Yeah. Um, I've done that, let's see. Um, over at the LA Derby Dolls when I was vending out in their vendor space. So for all of their breaks um, at 20 Wonder, which is an autism awareness fundraiser. Mm. For the Somerset Festival of the Arts in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Very cool. Very cool. And even out in Wellington, New Zealand, where I went out to uh, participate in the world of wearable art. Wow. So that's the nice thing. It's portable. 
Yeah. I can take it really wherever I go, as long as I can take the stapler and the scissors and, you know, the scissor harness. The scissor harness, right. It's important. <laughs> Absolutely. As a performance, it makes it a lot more awesome. But it also works as a class. So I thought this is a great way to show people something they might otherwise feel a little intimidated by. Sure, and a way to engage them in the process of what it is they're doing with their lives, right? Yes. This way, you are, it's very literal. I am touching myself, I am touching another person, I am making an outfit on you to you. The other sort of sneaky benefit of this one is it trains you how to work with other people, mm -hmm. which is not something you get taught in design school, in fashion school, in pattern making school. And sadly, a lot of professionals don't really know how to do a very good job of it. But treating other people like human beings, that they are unique and fabulous, and don't need to be poked in the side. Sure, sure. You know, it's just me. So, well, don't be mean. Don't, don't be, be mean. mean. <laughs> and on that note, I think we're going to step into uh, the studio. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.